So today we're going to be looking at the hydrogen emission spectrum. And this is one of the first things you'll learn in chemistry. So it's important that you understand this well. So to understand the hydrogen emission spectrum, first we need to look at the basic Bohr model. So the Bohr model of an atom. And the Bohr model of an atom really is quite simple. And it consists of a nucleus. And in the nucleus, we obviously have protons and neutrons. And then probably more, more importantly, in the Bohr model, there are energy levels. And you might recognize this from GCSE or any other syllabus where you learn about shells. But really in IB, we're going to be talking about energy levels. So electrons, which are on the energy levels, can only exist on a discrete energy level. And they have certain amounts of energy. So, for example, on energy level number one, we can have two electrons. Or and the next we have can have more electrons, eight, and so on and so forth. And they have certain amount of uh, amounts of energy, and they exist in these energy levels. And when we're talking about energy levels, we're really talking about where is the highest probability that these electrons can exist. So in this case, this is energy level one, two, three, and four. So if we understand that well, then we can look at the um, extended version of the hydrogen emission spectrum. And if we understand that electrons exist on specific energy levels and with a certain amount of energy, then we can also go on to understand that electrons can gain or lose energy or emit energy to transition between certain energy levels. So let's say an electron wants to is on energy level number two and it wants to go down to energy level number one. Well, then it's going to emit energy in order to decrease in energy and go down to energy level number one. And this is the same for if an is opposite for if an electron is, let's say, at energy level number one and wants to go to a higher energy. So in order to go to a higher energy, it's going to require energy. So that means it's going to have to absorb energy to go to, let's say, energy level number two. So when an, when an electron moves from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, we say that it's absorbing energy and that it's in the excited state. And when an when an electron moves from a higher energy level to a lower energy level and it's emitting energy, we say that it's in a relaxed state. So this is really the core of this concept. And then if we want to look at the emission spectrum, which is what this is called, we're going to be focusing on electrons moving from a higher energy level to a lower energy level. Now to understand this in terms of um, vis if visually, we can look at the colors, so the color spectrum. So on the first spectrum here, we can see an absorption spectrum. Now this is really important to understand. So from what we just learned, an absorption, when an electron absorbs energy, it moves from a higher to a lower energy level. So that means that the colors, there are going to be certain wavelengths of energy that are going to be absorbed by an electron, which are going to cause there to be lines on the spectrum. And the opposite is true for the hydrogen emission spectrum. So when an energy, when an electron moves from a higher energy level to a lower energy level is going to emit energy and it's going to emit photons or packets of light or energy. So that's going to create colors on the emission spectrum, which we can see here. And so really now we can draw the hydrogen emission spectrum. So when drawing the hydrogen emission spectrum, there are a few things that are important to draw. So first, you're going to draw 
the base energy level, so n equals 1. And then you're going to um, draw all of the successive energy levels, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the last one being infinity. And it is obviously when you t uh, the energy levels are increasing in energy as you go up, and they become closer together, or we say that they converge. And so when we're focusing on the emission spectrum, we want to be drawing lines that are going down, as we just learned, because they're emitting photons or they're emitting energy. So the first one is going to be to n equals 1. And when it goes to n equals 1, sorry, it is UV. So it is emitting an energy which is equal to UV radiation. Or UV light. So that can go from n equals 2 to n equals 1, n equals 3 to n equals 1, n equals 4 to n equals 1, and those are all going to be UV. And then it's quite simple, we're just going to go to n equals 2 instead of n equals 1. And that is going to be an energy which is equal to visible light. And then lastly, the ones that we like to include is into n equals 3. And n equals 3 is infrared. So now we can understand that certain energy levels, when they are emitted or energies are emitted by electrons, they produce a certain energies on the emission spectrum and so produce different versions of um, light or color as well which we can see on the hydrogen emission spectrum um, up here so you can see how they're connected so that's all for the hydrogen emission spectrum and so let's just go over the main points that we need to know that the hydrogen emission spectrum are made up of discrete energy levels um, discrete energy levels with electrons with a certain amount of energy with a particular energy and the energy levels um, converge um, as they successively increase increase and um, when electrons uh, electrons can either be excited or relaxed or relaxed so this is meaning either they're absorbing or emitting energy and that the discrete energy levels, they successively converge and they also become higher in energy. So those are the main points that you need to know for the hydrogen emission spectrum. So I hope this video was helpful.